Okay, I've got this AI Volt 1200 watt petrol inverter generator, four stroke, 1200 watts starting and 1100 watts long term if you're running over time. 1200 watts will probably burn it out if you demand too much from it. But anyway, instructions on how to start it, set it up. It's not that complicated. And it's not that heavy, 12 kilograms. Okay, so that's a few things you get with it. A funnel, that's useful. A screwdriver spark plug tool. Twelve volt DC battery charging cable. And a British plug with a thirteen amp fuse in it. Thirteen amp. But no cable. It might come in handy one day. Put it all back. This little packet is hard to clip back on. I'll deal with that later. Okay, like I said, it's 12 kilograms. Okay, don't need that. Okay, stop. Do not start it. You need to put oil in it first. So put oil in before you put petrol in. Very good. If you want to be sure. 10W30 it says on that packet there. With the oil. Oil doesn't go in there, that's petrol. Okay. That's to enable petrol. And that's to crank the engine over. Do not add fuel or start the engine before adding oil. Don't forget to put in oil. So there's two stickers on there, which is pretty handy. So don't pull it and try and start it unless you put oil in. Okay. And a fuel filter. with a rubber seal and it fits really well the plastic's actually pretty hard so it's quite a solid well feels quite strong and sturdy okay once again put the oil in just fill it up as much as you can the little orange there okay once again add Oil. I've got some oil. I don't have 10W30. I have it. I have 10W40. awkward to get your fingers in there and it's in really tight the first time and it's empty now I'm just using a funnel and have remembered that I've have remembered I've given a funnel now it's got a screw top so you can screw it in And it doesn't feel that good. It feels like I'm going to burr that thread one day, but anyway, I did get it in properly. That just 
keep fiddling with it. Cool. And we can use that as well. W40. It's good enough. It's a bit of a risk pouring it in. I don't really know how much to pour in. It's about 350 mils, but what is 350 mils when you're pouring? I don't really know. a neighbor oiled hopefully there's less chance of burring it okay more guesswork you can see it going down okay I'm going to say that's enough continues to drip I just have to wait for that to finish it's going to go everywhere make a real mess if I don't wait and it's quite cold on this day so the oil is very thick still Still dripping. Okay, I'm not going to wait any longer. Let's have a look. Okay, I can actually see the oil in there. Doesn't show up on the camera, but I could see it, and that's pretty good. Okay, cold fingers. A bit tricky. Give it a clean. when you got it right it does seem a bit tricky but it definitely feels like it's right now okay so use the supplied screwdriver to tighten the screw back up now I need to get some fuel okay so I've just kicked over one of the your containers, that one was empty, but I've got two of them. Cool. And this is the full one. Alright, let's put some 
fuel in. Oh, well, let's look at it for a bit. That's the exhaust and it gets hot. That's probably the exhaust. Hot. But in reality, it doesn't get that hot. Super fishy. Not when it's really cold. It's going to be the exhaust. It's a bit stinky when you first start it up and you do have to run it in... This is what it looks like. Or side. run it pointed downwind. So. That's my experience so far, that it is a bit stinky. If there's not much wind and the wind is blowing the wrong way. But that is normal of all engines. Do not use any damp location. Some little warnings there. Don't use it when it's or don't use it in damp conditions. But I've used it in the rain and it's been okay. And the cover's pretty good. In there is the spark plug. And it's quite hard to kind of get to it. I don't need to get to it really, but one day I might. And I'll approach that problem then. And look, try and figure out more what's actually going on in there. And I can use the spark plug tool. That fits nice and well. It feels quite sealed. Okay, a dirty funnel, clean it out, otherwise I'll mix oil with the fuel, which I don't think really matters that much, just a little bit. It's a four-stroke engine, so it doesn't need oil in the fuel. Okay, pour away, don't spill. That's unleaded fuel. That's enough. The same that I put in my car. Yeah. Now to just tidy up the spilling. Because it was a little bit messy. good okay that's all good it feels very solid it's quite a well-built machine okay on the back here lots of buttons main on and off It's the 12 volt DC outlet. DC. If you need one. Five volt. That's for USB. DC. Two kinds of USB connectors there. Uh, USB type A and Type C. Those two types. Okay, that's the AC 230 volts. And that, and those are for running multiple generators together in parallel or serial. Low idle. low idle. I tend to run it in low idle all the time. If it needs, if it detects it needs more energy, it just turns it up. And that's the ground. Okay. And that's useful when you're running in serial or parallel. Multiple generators. Okay, so just pump some petrol a little bit. Perhaps it helps. Okay, so now I just have to double check the instructions on how to start it. I have put oil in. Move the generator outside to a flat level surface. Yep, so the generator on a flat surface. Turn the fuel switch. To now turn the fuel switch on. That's that dial there in the top right. Okay, on. Fuel is on. Pull the choke lever out. Now the choke lever. Put it in the start position. There we go. Turn the engine switch to on. Main switch to on. Switch. On this side. The red one. Yeah, it is on already. Okay. It was already on. 
but it's on now for sure. Right, I've never done this before. Okay, so and when I'm making this video, so I'm very nervous. I need to double check everything just to be sure. Because I'm not really sure what's going to happen. But I'm feeling more confident. Just move that petrol out of the way. And the rubbish. Just to be sure. Okay, let's start it. Okay, two pulls, that's pretty good. The choke is on there. You can see a little bit of white smoke coming out. That goes away. Alright. Excellent. It's pretty quiet. It's good. Okay, so now I just switched it into low mode. Not that bad. It's a little bit noisy. Well, it's, it's not, not that noisy. noisy. It's pretty That's good. In an open space, it's smoky. 10 meters away, and it's, it hardly really bothers you at all. It's got some light on it. So I've got the door open, and it's out it's there. And it's kind of not that annoying, really. Anyway, now I need to test it, so I need to get some electrical cables. Or extension cables, I've got a few I know I do. That's sure power, that's not good enough. Move that out of the way. Now I've got two standard extension cables, they're both very long. Not sure which one to use yet. Which one? And the two of them there. Right, uh, yeah. And an old extension what board that? there. It's broken. I'm going to have to throw that out. I don't know why I kept it. Uh, anyway, let's just test with a heater, maybe. Rather than unravel a, this is a really long extension heater. cord. Now, this heater, I don't know I don't what know the rating is yet, but let's just find it. Put the glasses on. 2,000 watts. 2, watts. Okay, so I can't really run that on this generator, so that's not going to work. That tiny little heater is going to cause the generator to stop. Or overheat or something, I don't know. Looking around. Need I'm going to use that battery charger. That's a battery charger. I can't remember what the rating was on that. Something like 350 watts. I did check it some time ago. Remember it was quite low. So I'm going to use that. And that's really the purpose or the reason why I got the generator anyway. I want to be able to charge the batteries if they're completely flat. Which could happen. Especially in winter because it gets quite cold. And I have the diesel heater on all the time, and the diesel heater has a fan in it that pushes the heat through. So that uses up quite a bit of electricity if it's on high. Maybe about 10 to 20 percent of the total battery storage throughout the night. So I just want to make sure the next day I can start my engine. So that's why I've got the generator. Anyway, I'm going to have to use the extension cable. Okay, it's massive and it's all tangled, so I'm going to spend some time untangling it. It's probably about 20 metres long, this extension cable. It's better than not having an extension cable. Just still looking around. Maybe there's something easier to test with. Oh, I'm going to have to use extension cable. Anyway, the uh, generator's there running in the background and I forgot all about it. So that's pretty good. Okay, one end of the cable. And this end. Other end of the cable. I'll get to it. 
and for the uh, we'll go into the battery charger for the okay, uh, battery that's charger down there at the bottom right, let's plug this bit into the generator and see what happens put it on a okay, back in high mode that was unnecessary really I actually do run it in low mode and it's good enough Okay, so that is connected, there's a green light there, and that green light is the output ready indicator. There are two other lights there. Overload and low oil. And neither of those are red, so all good. Alright, so you can see the charger is on and it's working away. It's now charging my batteries. I've got 400 amp hours of batteries that's four big batteries 100 amp hour each and they're all configured in parallel so that charger even though it's little actually works and after a few hours it'll be full but actually it's, the batteries are pretty well charged already I've got solar panels and you can see it's generating 14.6 volts there from a generator so it's like well, anyway, the engine's running before. like the diesel engine is running Charge. but the generator is actually running it now Batteries. and it's working pretty good and that like I said is the real reason why I got the generator because I want to be able to charge the batteries in case they get really low if I do work on the diesel engine like change the oil filters Oh look, it's full. The batteries are full already, but you know, they were full already. We knew that already because I showed a hundred before. But anyway, when I'm doing work on the diesel engines and I'm changing the oil filters, and there's no diesel in the lines, it can take a long time to restart the engines. A couple of minutes of turning it over to get the fuel back through. So there's a risk of the batteries going flat. So the generator is perfect in case I do run them, run the batteries flat. So that generator's so far working pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it actually. And I have run it many times right. now since making this video. Turn it off. Move any load. Okay, so I did that. And I've noticed and that you kind of forget it's running. Off. When you've got the doors closed on the boat, you're sitting downstairs on the laptop. Yeah. The engine could be running for, the generator could be running for an hour and you sort of forget about it. But when you run out of fuel, you certainly remember that there was a generator running because it's quite a change in noise right, from this low humming noise, this low vibration noise that you can hear. Anyway, I'm really happy with it. It didn't cost me much. I got it from Amazon. Delivered pretty quickly. And anyway, thanks for watching. Remember to like, comment, subscribe and share.